Also welcome on the stage, founder of Klavinch Piano, David Klavinch. And last but not least, Michael Part, music producer and head of the supervisory board of the Arvo Part Center. Welcome. Andra, stage is yours. Thank you, Atis. So thank you all for coming to this uh, great discussion, I hope. And uh, so let's begin. So uh, you both are years and years into music industry, into music business, and you are familiar with the term creativity, and you know that the struggle is real, how to become uh, up with uh, new ideas, new melodies. So uh, how the technologies are changing the way you think and how you are being creative. Can you maybe tell the experience from 10 years ago and how it is now? Um, sure. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, 10 years ago or more, uh, finding uh, resources uh, online and just for yourself has been a completely different uh, picture to what it is today. So the, despite all of the kind of slow living and the things that we've heard this morning, and the positivity really is how much there actually is at our fingertips. And uh, it is a un unlimited amount of resources. Um, the other day I woke up to, to a beautiful piece of music on the radio and I was completely mesmerized by it. And driving to my work for 45 minutes, I listened to every iteration of this piece of music, um, finding the right recording and my favorite recording. Now, doing this 10 years ago would have required me to go out to the record store and buying 30 CDs, and the whole thing would have become much more complicated. So as far as creativity is concerned, the, the access to information, and that's, that's a, a unilateral approach. It's not just music-based, it's, it's universal. Um, it's something that really aids that. David? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I absolutely agree with uh, Mikael's take on it, and also my personal experiences. Since, in particular, I don't listen to the radio at all, and I used to listen to the radio 20 years ago, then I became annoyed by the unwanted information that was fed there in between the songs and music. And so today, I think the big, uh, the huge advantage is the choice we have, the, uh, the yeah, unlimited choice of music we can choose. Uh, as far as the library goes, as far as, as Vikar said, if you're on the road or you know you will have a longer trip on, in, on the plane, you can have your playlist. Playlists, we, uh, as we know, are in today. And you listen to what you want. That's, I think, one huge advantage. Uh, regarding cr creativity, uh, surely it's also a huge advantage because uh, you have so many examples of people. Uh, for example, when I listen to music, uh, uh, thinking about something, whatever uh, I would like to do myself, I hear some motive for, of somebody else. I think, oh yeah, this is, this is a great theme. I could improvise over as well because I'm I can't play with the piano. Actually, I'm an improvisation uh, pianist, and I get a lot of inspiration of music that I hear just because it's so widely spread. And so uh, I think uh, altogether the human creativity, in particular in music, will not be matched by artificial intelligence in the foreseeable future. I don't see it. I want to talk more about the, these uh, search engine, engines like YouTube and Spotify, as I know that you use it a lot in your creative work. For example, there are 40,000 new tracks uploaded on Spotify daily. So how not to get lost in this huge amount of data? Like, uh, can you say, yeah, these algorithms are really working for me? Um, this is a very, one of the most important questions in this very age of data overflow. Uh, if we go back about 30, 40 years and we look at the record industry, by the time an artist was given the privilege to be let into a recording studio and be given studio time and, and hold a microphone and, let's just say, sing or play, uh, how much um, vetting and selecting and, and, and uh, training and proving yourself already had to go by before you even have the chance to be recorded. Compare that today, I take my phone out and I have everything here already today. So the, a certain process of, of, of um, quality control 
used to be happening way at the beginning. So by the time something gets produced and, and production is polished and finished, uh, the, the proportion of the quality that was churned out was completely different to today. So the more data there is and the more accessibility we have to digital um, information, um, it, the more it's like an a infl inflation effect. The more the search engines try to compensate by, by tailor-making something for you. Um, it doesn't make the information better. The only thing that happens, and those things happen in parallel, you know, supply demand is always in balance, and if there's a little bit of balance like that, then tomorrow it's gonna be like that, and the day after it's gonna be like that. There is too much, too much content, and then the, the interfaces, it might be social media, it might be search engines, it doesn't matter what platform it is, um, compensates by, find, by selecting for you the thing that you think you want. And the key word here is think because that's, that's the selection process of what makes a, a portal or um, a search engine think this is what you want. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I do have some thoughts. First of all, I totally agree with what Michael said and uh, about the term think in particular. I have myself since like 15 years or so developed a, a definite uh, like urge to uh, set, set up filter systems for myself. So I'm not, that's why I don't listen to the radio. It's unfiltered information. And I think an individual system of filtering what you really want after you have thought about what's good for you. I mean, what's good for you means like music is, has such a huge variety of expressions and um, I strongly believe there is destructive music. It's not all constructive, it's not, not all good, but everybody must know for themselves what's good. I don't ask for some en engines to decide what's good for you to listen to or not. But um, the principle that you develop your own criteria, so to say a catalog of criteria by which you go, by which you select, by which you set up, or to what you listen in the first place, I think that's uh, one very healthy uh, approach to this m multitude and really totally unlimited uh, uh, offer that we see in music. But it also has a flip side. I mean, this the fact, as you mentioned, the, the fact that you have, a, that it's so easy today to produce your own music, that gives a chance to all those talented musicians who never would have a chance in the old days when you had to go in a studio. So, and, and there's fantastic musicians. I mean, absolutely fantastic musicians you just stumble upon when you look at, at, at people who do music. And so it's, it's good, like everything has a flip side. It's fantastic on the one side and it's pretty much dangerous if you get lost in it, or in it on the other side. Don't you get sometimes this fear of missing out that you are looking for some new talented artist and that you, for example, um, dig deep enough, you could find someone even better as the horizons are unlimited nowadays? Uh, the horizons always were unlimited. Um, the horizons haven't changed. Uh, in fact, humans haven't changed. It's, it's what com uh, connects us that is changing. And this is really the misconception misconception. Um, um, uh, the gentleman who was just um, earlier talking about Siri, um, uh, this is really the point because Siri is very good in telling you how many centimeters there are between the earth and the moon and it tells you all the other facts um, and there's nothing else that can beat that in terms of speed and accuracy and of course circumstantially but you know what I mean. Um, but 95% of the kind of the, is the X factor of, of the human touch. Um, so your, I, I will paraphrase the question, is, uh, is AI good in feeding you information <laughs> that is really special? We very much hope so. Um, and um, at the same time, AI, um, the development of AI could really be classed into two stages. We have, I don't think uh, in the creative world we have yet to reach stage two. Stage one being that we have to feed it information. And in stage two, we get 
something back from AI, where AI can be AI. Um, you know, when it comes to, to human um, uh, saving robots and, and Mars rovers and all of these kind of AIs, AI excels and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It can do some lateral thinking. Whereas when it comes to the true creativity, as we are speaking here on stage today, when it comes to the music industry, um, then there is a very long way to go. So I see that we are still in the, in the process of taking the baby steps for Spotify to, to, to see that I've once listened to this track. So does that mean that I now always want to listen to this track? You know, my, my, my kids come and listen to one track, suddenly I get all of their, their, their music as my suggestion. Um, so th there, are, there are lots of disconnects between the real world and those suggestions. Uh, so the very first track that was completely generated by the computer was already in 1950s. What are your thoughts about uh, music that's made by AI? Me personally, uh, I, have, I don't listen to techno and anything else that sounds like techno. I don't want to annoy anybody who loves techno, that's not my point. But uh, I think the music that's created by humans, uh, although, ar as you say, artific artificial intelligence can do it since long, and gets, uh, gets ever better at, at it, but the uh, human touch and the uh, uh, music created by humans always, always, always have, will have more soul, more content, that I, at least I feel it that way. And so I think even if they're, uh, as a, as a complementary uh, part of the music, I think it's fantastic. For example, if you take the sound libraries today, uh, let's say my pianos, the Unacorda. There's a sound library that's called Unacorda. It's a fantastic expansion on the Unacorda. The Unacorda has a limited, of course, like every analog instrument can do, they can create beautiful tone, but uh, you can do so crazy, fantastic things with that sound library on Unacorda. I love it myself. I think it's a fantastic expansion. And if, should AI develop this way and all the developments that go in this way that actually support creativity, that's uh, highly appreciated in my, my view. It's only the question is, where's the limit and where's the limit to a healthy development versus um, questionable development? There's also this thing that um, if we look at music in the classic sense, um, for example, Mozart, um, it's highly uh, mathematical, highly rhythmical, highly structured. Uh, which is one of the reasons why it is very often used for for, mu to, for playing for babies or uh, when when uh, when children are still in the womb, because there is this recognition, this inherent um, logical kind of uh, understanding that you already understand the, the the shape of the music, the rhythm of the music, uh, the the rhythm of the structure, and uh, it is human nature uh, likes predictability. Just like when you look at films, um, the way the dra dramaturgy works, the director and the producers, they shape the music for anticipation. So for anticipation of what? Uh, so even though the, the screen characters don't really follow uh, the, the, the narrative, the viewer, the audience, hearing the music will understand there is a climax and it's going to happen in eight bars. I just, I can, I, I hear it in my kind of, hearing and you don't have to have a musical ear to understand that it, the music is going towards somewhere. So this predictability and Mozart is really kind of the, and Bach as well of course, um, they, they have a lot of this. So I think that um, AI and I know that a lot of re research has already been done on that, there's a long way to go on also working out on some of the patterns that, that have really worked in music. And what, what, what David was saying before, it's absolutely true that the, the soul this is kind of this is the thing that is the furthest away from what Siri is really good at today, and this is, I think, a, a path that we will just get closer and closer to. The question of how close we will get to remains to be seen. Yeah, there are now a lot of services, online services, that can help you out, like to compose a song, for example, that's learning all the classical music, for example, and uh, can anybody now be a musician, and can it? produce a like fast food music wave when everybody uses just the generated content? It's um, dangerous. It's dangerous because it's great as a concept and as a prototype um, to understand the process, to learn from the process, 
um, as a study material. Um, uh, I question its, its depth um, because there is a certain process in, let's say, when a composer is composing that cannot be explained. It can't be put into some rationale. Um, and I think there isn't a single AI discussion without exactly this topic about understanding this rationale. And I don't think anybody has gotten there. So um, uh, we need a lot of more data input before this data together with algorithms will start getting us the first results. Um, but without doing what we do today, in today's age, we will never get to the next. So nothing is wrong. So everything is going the right way. I think the diversity of the human souls that are on the planet, as we know, there's not one that's the same as the other, uh, creates a much, much more interesting landscape when you think about composers, uh, human composers. I don't think that artificial intelligence will ever reach that, ever, ever reach that kind of stage, and it's not necessary as well. It would be necessary if, we, if there would be no humans anymore, and the artificial intelligence should then replace what we are doing now. I think it's, uh, my view is that if we strictly look at uh, AI as, a, as tools, as tools for creative uh, composers, musicians, uh, then it's a fantastic thing and uh, we don't need, to, definitely don't need to try to make AI comparable, uh, like competing with humans to get it on a stage. I mean, scientists are interested, of course, to go higher, higher, further, further. So, yeah, I created this fantastic uh, computer. It's uh, a, a, a machine that is similar to a human. But it will never <coughs> happen, I hope, at least. And, uh, I mean, there's no need, definitely, to, for that to happen. Uh, so, do you have any thoughts about the future, how this uh, relationship before between humans and artificial intelligence can be or in, and how it should be developed? From my point of view, <coughs> I, I see the big problem in the fact that there is no regulation in developing artificial intelligence. Elon Musk is there a little bit outspoken, more outspoken on that. I mean, the only one really outspoken, I think, on the subject. And uh, I see the problem that, that as if we now, as we are marching forward for, with AI and have definitely no, no, and it's also not possible, I think, to get a worldwide uh, regulatory uh, setup that everybody would respect. Uh, it's, it's, I don't have many, very mixed feelings. I think the, <clears throat> the, pos uh, the possible negative uh, consequences could be likely higher on the long run than all those fantastic tools and things and aids that we all appreciate today. So I'm actually, I would, uh, I'm skeptical, very skeptical about the overall development of AI. Um, with the, the last few years of um, the growth of the social media, we have seen how, how algorithms are really feeding us information. It feeds us information that, that comes from us. From data that we provide, we get information back. So we give a ping, we get a pong. Um, with with um, artificial intelligence, there is this notion that we want to get a lot of pong. We want to get a lots, lots back. But maybe it shouldn't be like that. Maybe it, it should always remain as a balance of, of um, artificial intelligence not, not there to replace something, but to help us. Not to compete with us, but to help us. So that we can do what we want to do anyway that is irreplaceable, this X factor, so to say, the, the opposite end of Siri, so to say. Um, and to let humans do that, and for, for technology to take to take on the steps that can be replaced, that can be automated, that can be algorithmed. So can we say that artificial intelligence will never be an artist because it has no soul as humans does and still in the music there has to be some feelings, backstory about the artist? Uh, the views in the eye of the beholder uh, and in the ear of the listener, um, absolutely true. And um, at the same time, uh, there can also be a context. A context can be that an artist is programming an artificial intelligence algorithm, and that context and how the parameters are, 
are the elements of that soul that you're talking about. So there is always a link to the human. Um, at what point do you cut off that umbilical cord and you see um, wh what's that expression when AI is going live or uh, some films that where they're saying yeah, on this day, you know, AI became um, self-aware. That's the one, self-aware. You know, we're not talking about this kind of stuff. We're, we're talking something that happens on this, on this earth uh, for real. So there's always this connection to the human. And, and so even if there are some um, synthesized uh, sounds or, 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 or music, there is an algorithm and that was um, fed initially, originally by human. Yeah, <clears throat> which means we return again to the one and only, I mean, not only, but the most important aspect, I think, that AI should always be an aid to the human action, interaction, or creativity, and should help humans in every way. And as it does, I absolutely agree, Michael, uh, this boundary, this, this connection to the human will be always there, and the sort of a guarantee that uh, that the music that comes out from this uh, combination of human and, and, and AI tools will still remain human and thus pleasant. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to suggest uh, that our audience can ask a few questions if you have any in mind. Artis will give you the microphone. I'm probably going to steal a microphone from you. Uh. One of you is going to give it up. Thank you very much. We have a question here. Where was it? Here. Please state who you are, who you represent. I'm going to Stirna. I'm locally a digital marketer. The question is, um, if that is true, actually, when we talk about artificial intelligence being a tool for the people, uh, let's take uh, Facebook. Aren't the people a tool for artificial intelligence that is created to generate more cash? Um, it all, always comes down to money because money drives the market. And this is, this is a very tragic, but also very good when it comes to progress because um, money is very uh, aggressive in in pushing progress. Um, we are all the guinea pigs in this, uh, and th the minute we, we make a Facebook account, we um, sacrifice our, our, our privacy and, and our information that gets sold. Um, so uh, it's, as soon as we make that one step, then everything else is fine, because this is a conscious step. We are, all, we are either in or we're out. It's as simple as that, there's no in-between. Um, uh, but then it, it takes its own life, so to say. The, the, the algorithms really embrace us and, and, um, and um, make use of the platform. So it's positive from that point of view. There are many negative aspects we can talk about, but from the positivity point of view, that's, that's true. I actually have a question for you. Um, in the future, uh, probably AI is going to get better and better, and also in, in music, for example. Uh, and I'm going to paint a picture. Is, how re realistic do you think that is, that in the future, AI will create such good music that it will be free for the masses, and then there's going to be this posh underground movement where people are actually making music. Do you think that's a reality in the future? Or, uh, or will humans always uh, stay on top? I believe humans will always stay on top. Though, uh, of course, there is already today, there's a lot of free music by the means of really like, uh, like, like stuff that uh, everybody can um, watch this, uh, li listen to in, uh, on Spotify. But it will always, in my belief, it will always have be a stage below what humans really create. And should it happen anyway, then uh, it's inevitable that uh, all kinds of processes that the industry want happen. We cannot do anything against it. We can only counteract. Everybody, single person, can counteract as we possibly 
uh, see a personal platform for, for example, composing something or initiating something good or so. So whatever it will be, I strongly believe human uh, creativity will always, absolutely always, supersede mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. Any other questions? The microphone is here. This is your chance to ask a question. That's why you are here and not watching online. You have the opportunity to ask one. Okay, so maybe a closing statement. If you have something on the tip of your tongue, just spread it out about our topic. It's very important to stay creative and true to your own ideas. Technology will come to help you from the outside, but it starts with yourself. I couldn't say it better, so I simply agree with Michael. <laughs> Thank you very much, and our time is up. Thank you very much all for coming, and maybe you can catch the speakers somewhere there if you're afraid of questioning here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>